This is for the creators. How you doing? How you doing? Good. I can't believe that we're on episode five zero. Like, really? Mad, 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 mad. And we're doing this remote today. I oh, know. Technically, um, we should have met up for our fiftieth episode and make it a celebration. But yeah, I saw it go. How it goes is how it goes. I mean, you had trouble getting into our recording spot yesterday um, due to the M25, and I had my car broke down today. <laughs> so, know. yeah, it's just it's crazy how, how it, it goes. goes. But the show must go on, and here we indeed, are. Indeed, indeed, exactly. The show must go on, and that's pretty much been this year, right? The show must go on. Definitely, <laughs> literally, I think. It's an amazing feat to get to 50, but it's been a hell of a journey and an exciting ride to get here. So I think it will be really cool to take our audience a little bit back to where it all began. Do you want Absolutely. to tell them my little story or should I? Yeah. Um, well, just to, to, to give the audience a little uh, background. So we're going to uh, journey into how we've got to where we've got so far and uh, a little about ourselves because obviously we interview tons of great creatives but we haven't divulged much much about ourselves so far um just little tidbits here and there so yeah Vinid, how did we how did we meet how did that come about yes yeah, so i have a friend um called dominic i think dominic deserves a mention because when you hear the story you'd understand why um yeah, I've Dominic. known Dominic since I was about 18 and my hair was natural and I just happened to be going to Dominic every week to get my hair um, shaped up. But nearing the end of last year, which was 2017, Dominic kept saying to me, oh, you really need to meet my friend Ryan. Like, you really need to meet my friend Ryan. He's a music producer, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even being rude, but I was just like, yeah, cool. Like, you know, of course, whenever yeah, yeah. we get to meet, like we'll, we get to meet. But Dominic went as far as sending me your Instagram profile. I checked out your profile. Mm. I was like, okay, looks like a cool guy, you know. But still, I wasn't like, I was still like, yeah, when, when we meet, we meet. Because I didn't, because he, he never really said why he wants us to meet. He just kind of said mm. that we're on the same wavelength. That we yeah. wouldn't, I was never even able to visualize what we're doing now or even anticipate that so much will come out of him saying that we need to meet. Anyway, cut a long story short, I was meant to go to Dominic's house to get my hair done on a Friday, I remember, because I always go to his house to get my hair done on the weekends. It's the most mm. convenient time. But for some reason, I think he was probably going out or I just couldn't make it. And I ended up going there on a Tuesday. So then I remember literally being, because Dominic lives, lived in a masonette at the time, so he had to come up the stairs, and I was at the top of the stairs. And then Dominic's like, it. oh, shame, <laughs> that there's Ryan. I'm like, what? Like, mad. And just to tie up the, the story from my end, um, it was the same thing. So I was always getting my hair cut by, by Dominic. And he was saying, yeah, you need to meet my friend Veneer, man. Trust me, you two are on the same vibe. Like, she's she's working in like, marketing and music. And trust me, like, you, you two are on the same vibe. You need to meet. Um, and done the same thing with Instagram and stuff. And um, I had actually missed my hair appointment on a, or my haircut appointment on a Saturday. And ended up at his house on a Tuesday. And I'd never been to his house on a Tuesday. Got up the stairs and Veneer's there. And I was like, hey! And... We literally just connected literally from that from that moment and we just spoke, spoke for what, two, three hours? Yeah, we had like a conversation to the point where you got your hair cut, I got my hair cut. <laughs> we were still yeah. just talking and talking and I was like, yeah, because um, Ryan said that he wanted to start a podcast and at that time, admittedly, I wasn't really, I listened to podcasts like here and there. But I was more into digital marketing. So when Ryan said that, I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, I, I could definitely help you out with, like, social media and promotion and that sort of thing. So let's just have a let's have a chat um, to just discuss how we can potentially work together. Yeah. 
And I remember calling you, I think it was maybe like the Sunday afterwards or something like that. And we had like another, I think it was supposed to be like a half an hour call, ended up being three and a half or four hours. Because <laughs> I remember going to the park and I was just walking around the park, walking around the park, having this conversation. And I was just like, wow, like it was so refreshing to talk to somebody that had been through the same kind of ups and downs and wanted to to create something with impact that wasn't a, necessarily about uh like us or, or or yourself but more about lifting up other people yeah because for my thing for as long as I can remember like I've always I've always wanted to be a motivational speaker in some capacity but I didn't want to be a motivational speaker without anything to prove not like anything to prove but not having something substantial of my own to use that as an example of why you should listen to me. But I've always yeah, known yeah. from when I was younger that my, like, the whole point of me being here on this planet is to uplift others. Mm. And not necessarily to be the person in the limelight, but to be that person who provides situations and the circumstances and assistance to others to help them to achieve their dream. Absolutely. So, yeah, them... We started talking and guys, listen, right? Ryan took a screenshot on Skype of one of those first <laughs> conversations <laughs> and yeah, um, decided yeah. to send uh, it to me uh, today uh, because we're recording remotely. And if he ever shares that photo with anyone, I will. That's that's my blackmail material. <laughs> I will terminate this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Because let me break that in the picture to you. When you're yeah, at home, you get too. extremely comfortable. And I don't know, from the get-go, I've been extremely comfortable with Ryan. So we're having the conversation. <laughs> and Sunday is the day when the girl pampers herself. So I was having my hair, like, hair conditioner in, plastic cap on, bright fuchsia pink. Plastic. Yeah, pink. As you do with cling film on my head as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is me speaking to a guy that i've known for probably a couple of weeks so the confidence level was very high um, very but anyway yeah but <laughs> nice. that has literally been our relationship from the start it's so un- uncanny because when mm. when people listen to these conversations they assume that we've known each other for a long time some even assume that we're best friends and and things like that because we have such a good rapport, but we've only known each other from January, 2018, the 9th of January, 2018 to be exact. So we've only known each other now for 10 months. It's mad. It's actually crazy. But we did say like the amount of time that we've spent together in terms of like speaking and working and all of that, it's almost like cramming, a 10, ten year relationship, ten years well. worth of, of, of friendship into into one, in, in, into less than one even. Yeah, definitely. It's been yeah, it's been crazy. So at that point, um, I think I'd recorded a couple episodes, and uh, I was saying to Vinay, "Look, oh, we need to launch in end of February. Like, why are we waiting? Like, we need to just like go, 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 go. Because as soon as you got an idea, like, you just want to get it out there and." And it was like, well, but what's the rush? Like, why let, let's do this properly. If we're gonna, if we're gonna pull it out, you like, you don't want to put out two in March, and then what you're gonna follow it up with? I was like, mm, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. we we set out uh, making a plan. Um, we met up at least every, I think it was every Sunday at the time. We like yeah, and we meetings, did a lot of too. research as well. I think the first, yeah. I'll say the first three four months because we started the podcast on the 30th of april that was our very first one um mm-hmm. but the first yeah three or four months was spent researching the industry as well and really getting to grips in terms of how we're going to execute this we spent a lot of time not just thinking about the market itself but thinking about what we wanted for the rep- for the creators to represent and yeah. I actually feel really good now, 10 months later, because that when we spoke about that initially, it was just an idea. But I, I can really see that every single thing that we discussed at that point, we've actually done. Yeah, we've executed on. And 
we've we've gone a lot further than we could imagine i think as well because there's so many things you can't plan for um one of the things we did set our intentions on initially was the uh the ethos so we set four e's so we wanted all of our content to be um exciting enlightening educational and Ing- no that's i think we're making them up now no <laughs> 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 no, it was definitely educational, enlightening, enlightening. Oh my god! Elevate. Elevates. 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 There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we we do follow, now we follow now those engaged. four E's. Um, but that kept you engaged, didn't it? No, exactly. There you go. Exactly. So yeah, but, yeah we, set out, fair, we set out our intentions from the from the start, from the start and, and um, we, we 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 set, set out, out making, making a plan, plan that would kind of represent what those uh, intentions were. So when it comes so down, to, it comes the, down the, to the the podcast, podcast itself, itself, the actual, the actual tone, of the tone of the conversations, the actual kind of questions, the questions that we ask, the fact, fact that we're not controversial at all, the fact that as a listener you're only going to feel uplifted. From the conversations, from the conversations. Um, some, um, of some of them are going to be, you know, you know more, more relaxed than others. others. Uh, some of them are going to be more educational than others. But ultimately, but ultimately uh, as, a uh, as a listener and as a, as a for the for creator, creator uh, audience member, member um, you're, you're going, going to be elevated, elevated. and that's, that's what we've done throughout the audio, audio content and the Instagram. And if you haven't checked out the Instagram, make sure you check out Instagram. Veneer runs the Instagram account and has, has done, done a phenomenal, phenomenal job in making, making it a uh, social media, media version of the the podcast. podcast. It's, it's actually mm-hmm. actually properly sick. properly sick. Yeah, the four E's have really really helped when we remember what they are. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but the four E's have helped because what it's what what's, what it's allowed us to do is when you're working in partnership with someone, you need to make sure that you're both on the same page. So mm. you'd notice from some of the content that sometimes Ryan will go out and interview and sometimes I would interview. Most of the times we're both there, but mm-hmm. we'll lead the interview. Um, and it's easy in the sense that we're, we can trust each other in terms of the tone of the conversation and the way how the conversation will flow even when we do it individually because we set our intentions early on. So you'd start yeah. to see that we have a formula and that is essentially our formula for everything that we do. With the Instagram page, I really wanted it to be a page that added value. And like Ryan said, I didn't want to put anything on there that was necessarily controversial. So there's a lot of things that are trending that we would never post on the page. Um and for the most part, I really wanted the page to be uplifting, but also wanted it to be an inspiration for creatives, which is why I created um, the Daily Creative Spotlight. And I remember the day when I did that as well. And it's probably one of the best things that I did for the page. And I think that's yeah. what really set it apart from everyone else. And it just came about randomly, as most of these things have come about for, for the creators. Um, there's another story that I'm going to tell as well <laughs> because mm-hmm. I feel like that really shaped for the creators. But with the Daily Creator Spotlight, I remember it vividly. There was just one day I was going through and I thought, why don't we showcase the most creative things? No, because in the um, Spotlight episodes that we do, so as you know, we do two type of episodes. So we do the full interview and we also do the Spotlight where we shine a spotlight on up-and-coming creative. So I thought, okay, so... Why don't we extend that to the Instagram profile? So I started yeah. going through and then there was, um, so we'd always ask on the spot, like, what's the most creative thing that you'd seen that week? So one particular week I thought, oh, why not do what's the most creative thing that I've seen that week on the Instagram profile? And then I did that and everyone responded really well to it because I think what it was doing was opening up their eyes to all of the creatives that are on Instagram essentially and Mm-hmm. it's like a black hole <laughs> of oh, creative <laughs> people it's crazy and it's really helped me to think outside of the box as an individual 
because mm. I really try my hardest to just find something that's going to make everyone go, wow, like, what the hell? That's what I'm going for most of the time when I'm looking for a creative. So it's never just going to be, like, the average painter. It'll be a painter that's complete, like, painting in a completely, like, new and innovative way. So some of the yeah. ones that we've had have been, like, there's a guy that does tattoos, but he puts a green screen on tattoos. Like, really? Um, Mad. What's been some of your favorites? Oh, there's tons, man. Like literally, and and this is why I can say that Instagram is sick because I'm experiencing it as a as an audience member, basically. Because I see it when you post it. Sometimes you send me uh, some of them to obviously post on on Twitter because I run the, the Twitter account. Um, but for the most part, I'm like shocked and amazed <laughs> by all the stuff that you find. I'm like, where the hell did you find this? Like first and foremost. Um, but some of them are just next level. Like, uh, I'm probably going to use something that's probably more recent, but I mean, there's been, there's been, there's been dog that so many. Been, been, been. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's been, uh, which one really made me like, raw? uh, Is it the lantern and there was like the, um, ah, I know there was one, uh, the, the, the director, sorry, not the director, the, the, the whole set that worked together to do this one take. Oh yes, a, that was really good. That was actually one that, that you recommended, but that was dope. Like that, 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 that floored me. That one where the whole, the whole set had to change in this one shot, and there's so many. This must be about thirty or forty people working together to make this one shot um, happen. Um, but that's on our Instagram page. You can definitely check that out. Um, there's a guy uh, that's doing a self portrait. But he's standing behind the canvas and he's filming himself drawing a portrait of himself on the canvas. Like, it was probably with his like with one hand, so with one, one hand, hand yeah. as well, like yeah. it, it's nuts. It's just nuts. Like there's there's been so many it's so it's, much. it's really difficult to count and, and because they're so different, like you you can't even compare them against each other. But I no. think what has been really cool about it is now that people look forward to it. And I think because our page, um, our, our audience is creatives as well, well, our creatives as well, I think it actually inspires people to think outside of the box. And, mm. and I didn't even realise how much people engage with the content. So sometimes if I even fail to post or if I don't post on time, I get people sliding into the DMs like, where's the post? I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, where's my morning motivation? What had happened was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's really nice to know that, and we've attracted a lot of people through the Instagram page and, and most, and we, we obviously post motivational content. So I post motivational content every morning because it's just nice to wake up to something um, motivating. Because mm. mm. what I wanted it to be was, I know how people react to content and yeah pr- proof of the pudding yeah. is when we promote when we promote episodes those are probably the ones that our audience engages with the least so it's important to add value on all of our platforms anywhere anywhere that Absolutely. you see the for the creator Absolutely. yellow is <laughs> literally now people just say oh yeah yeah the yellow one or the one with the head or... <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, exactly. we've, yeah, exactly. we've raised awareness which is which is also really nice i think mm. The other story that I wanted to tell as part of this journey and one of the things that I respect about our approach to all of this is the fact that we have not allowed obstacles to get into the way of our progress and our consistency. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the I'll start it and I'll let Ryan finish it because this sure, one sure. was basically, I, I can't remember. Yeah, we were probably on about our 10th episode. So this was the episode we were releasing with Sean Sega, who was um, playing a monk on One Girl at the time. And on Our Girl uh, our at girl, the time. Girl. Yeah. yeah. So this was episode 10. But we were supposed to record um, the Spotlight episode with DJ Laura Frazier. And my car just decided that it was going to break down. Well, it, it didn't break down, but I just wasn't sure if it was safe to drive it. So I was like, oh my God, we can't cancel we yeah. got to do it. <laughs> and then um, Ryan was like, oh, well, I can, you know, I can interview Sean about his role of Monk 
as a bonus episode because at that time our girl had just been launched um and everyone was kind of hype about it and he was like yeah I'll go and interview Sean I was like yeah dope cool and then Ryan was like let's call it a snapshot episode go on Ryan yeah so I, I for whatever reason I think I saw something on Twitter um and I saw the word snapshot or something about cameras and I was like oh spotlight snapshot um that's like kind of synonymous so I was like yeah why don't we do like these snapshot bonus episodes um with with some of the people that we're working with and that can be another style of our show so literally on that day um Sean agreed happily to to do it and we done a, a short uh like 20 minute snapshot episode which basically focused on one thing so I mean fans of the show will know that we typically do uh like a long like a sit down uh interview episode on a Monday and on a Friday we do a spotlight episode which is a bit more um you know focused on someone up and coming plus a, a topic of the week so the snapshot was to focus on literally just one thing and in this case it was um Sean's role as monk on on our on BBC One's Our Girl so that that generated a new format for us which you know out of Veneer's car not being safe and us having that kind of breakdown we got a a breakthrough literally that's the best way to put it from a breakdown to a, a breakthrough and we've experienced that throughout to even so the next obstacle I think the next major obstacle was when Ryan's laptop decided to have a grey screen jeez Oh my god! So I edit. No, so actually, what happened was um, I decided to go on a mad one, and you know, we we record a lot of shows and we do it in advance. And one night, I was just like, you know, what, I'm gonna edit four or five of them, and I did. And I was doing music and stuff as well at the same time. I think I remember talking about it on an episode. And um, yeah, I remember that because I remember waking up the next morning. It's like I've done this, and I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done. This, what like literally i woke up next and i was like <laughs> okay so someone was busy last night and then the trust computer me. said no trust me. Com- literally literally because <laughs> literally after i sent you that i was like all right yeah now i'm gonna go do some other bits and qb was like yeah yeah done <laughs> done i am done and this relationship yeah, is yeah, over compu- i want to divorce yeah honestly i was like flip what are we gonna do because the editing software I use is uh, Logic, which is a, a music program. Essentially, I've been using it for years as a producer. Um, and I was like, how the hell am I going to, how are we going to keep the consistency up if I can't edit? Um, you know, we're going to have to go to someone's studio or use someone uh, someone's equipment to edit. So I had to figure out a way. And I ended up downloading a free audio program called um, Audacity, which um, which is free and it's amazing, actually. Um, and I downloaded that onto, um, I had to borrow my mother-in-law's. Actually, I think we had Audacity before that because uh, of another obstacle. Yes. Because there was because another, of another obstacle, obstacle. obstacle when Ryan went to Centre Parks. Centre Parks, yes. And we had, that's to, right. we had to record remotely. So literally, the moral apt. of the story is all the things that we've done we've had issues but no one would ever know so ryan had to go to center parks because he was on holiday with his partner and then Mm. we wanted to maintain the consistency of our output because one of the things i said from the get-go is we need to release the two episodes every week and i know to some that it might be excessive but it's kind of part of our marketing strategy because we're trying to do this with as little funds as possible (laughs) so we Mm. needed to put them out regularly to push us up on the lead tables but also it was good practice for us I think as well because it just shows it just demonstrated that we can do it and you can literally put do anything that you put your mind to and the only anything that will stop you is excuses that you create for yourself and we do we were just not open to excuses so Ryan was going to center parks and it was never like oh yeah so yeah cool when you come back we'll just figure it out no it was like no we need to record an episode <laughs> and we did it exactly which is why yeah, we've yeah, got we audacity it. on his laptop and why i've got audacity on my laptop which is even allowing us to have this conversation now 
right now, which is mad when you think about it. Because uh, and on the same mic that we bought that week, remember? <laughs> For me to allow me to be able to record on my laptop to then be able to send Ryan the audio for him to then amalgamate and put together to create one audio. So you think that we're in the same room, which yeah. <laughs> and then uh-huh. when Ryan's laptop went, fast forward to the next yeah, problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then the good thing that happened in between, so Ryan's laptop broke down and then we, through that, we gained someone who's also ed- able to edit the shows. Ryan's. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Yeah. Cousin. So, yeah, so my cousin, um, he was looking for opportunities to uh, kind of test his skill set, and because he's an up and coming musician, um, and you know, as an up and coming creative, you need to um, try different things that add to your your resume. You know, so he said, "Look, if you need any help," and it just so happened that we did. So um, that was really cool because I got to teach him our editing process and the you know the the ethos behind you know what we keep in and what we don't and where we edit and where we don't and just the the whole style of it um and that was cool because yeah he really helped us out with that where he where he could um because at the time I had because I think actually this was before using um the the old uh, PC that I've been editing on recently I think it's because um, your laptop was like coming on and off like there was days when it was nice to you and then there's days when it will just go completely that's, that's right that's right yeah bringing it all back now bringing it all back yeah um yeah sometimes I because I managed to get into it and I, if you saw my Instagram stories at that time you would see that I was up at all different kind of hours of the morning just trying to figure this thing out but it eventually conked out um and uh, my cousin Brandon uh, gracefully helped us out there. So was really, again, like had that opportunity to um, to teach someone how to edit, you know, which then formalized how we edit because going forward, you know, it's not only going to be Veneer and I, like the, the vision is to, to, to build a team and to, you know, make more shows. So um, that actually helped us uh, process map the the process of what we're doing and then the good thing about that as well it's like the universe has literally been working in our favor so every breakdown that ryan said became a breakthrough because through him going on instagram and literally saying about all the woes that he was having with his mac (laughs) ryan ended up being offered um people just started offering him their macs to use which is just amazing because I think people saw what we're trying to do and they just wanted to assist us. And then at one point, Ryan was in the Apple store editing episodes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. So when I was getting my laptop fixed, um, they just said, you know what? Like, you can either pay to get this fixed elsewhere, but we can't do anything with it. Long story. But um, I was like, okay, um, I've got an episode to, to edit and get out. Like by monday you've got everything in here can i just use your equipment <laughs> and I, I literally had all the podcast equipment my uh hard drives like the orange lacy drives had everything in their headphones and they said yeah, yeah yeah like like go ahead um like until we close like you, you can use it it's all yours um so obviously found the the best imac that they had imac pro plugged in the podcast recorder to uh two hard drives my headphones everything's out lap my laptop's out everything like um and i've just basically commandeered the the apple store into my own editing suite and um it was funny because the guy at the genius bar actually gave me the permission to to do that um but he didn't communicate to the rest of the staff so i'm there with my headphones on opening up logic doing all the stuff that i need to do one of the guys taps me on the shoulder and he's like mate what are you doing (laughs) i was like um I'm editing uh, one of the guys on the genius bar said I could um, I could do this while uh, you know I explained the story and he's like oh yeah just go ahead so yeah we had a a big touch there man like the moral of the story is that whatever obstacle came up we just did not have it and you know we made sure that these shows came out uh, every Monday and every every Friday yeah it started off actually being Mondays and Wednesdays and then oh, yeah, at did, yeah. one point we decided that 
it should now be Mondays and Fridays. Because again, when, when we'd done our research into podcasting, we found that one of the best days was Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, Mondays being the day when everyone's returning to work. They've had all the fun on the weekend. And Wednesdays was also a good day because Wednesday's hump day and it's, it's in the middle. So people tend to listen to our type of podcasts on a Wednesday as well. But then mm-hmm. it got to a point where it was... The episodes were coming like they weren't the, the Monday episode wasn't given the time to breathe and mm-hmm. and for people to listen to it because the Wednesday ones were coming out straight away and then the spotlight yeah, yeah. ones were fitting for a Friday episode anyway because the spotlight episodes are quite laid back and you know they they they're more about trending topics whereas um the Monday ones are more autobiographical so yeah, yeah. the the two shows worked on those um particular days but that's not the end of the computer story because Ryan's got no. an even better story. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is, it's just, it's just amazing. So um, in my, my day job, um, I'm working with a developer to, uh, to create a piece of software for work. And uh, he was having a conversation. He was like, oh yeah, I've got a new iMac and um, we were just talking about the specs and stuff like that. Um, and then he mentioned that, oh yeah, and my old IMAX is sitting in the corridor. And I asked him, I said, um, oh, what? So you're not using it anymore? And he goes, no, no, no. I said, oh, well, I'm, I'm actually looking to to get one um, because I'm explaining the story with with what happened with my MacBook and stuff. And um, I said, are you, are you interested in selling it? And he goes, no, you can just have it. That works. Said, what? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> I said, he goes, yeah, you can just have it, man. Like, it's just sitting there. It's just, it's just gathering dust. Like, it actually helped me if you took it. I was like, oh, okay. I'm not going to ask twice. <laughs> um, he said, yeah, just sort the ship in um, because he lives in like Southampton. And yeah, we'll, we'll sort it out. And I was like, oh my days. And then it turns out that, the, that one, it's an iMac, which I've all want, always wanted. Two, it has better specs than my MacBook did. And it's newer. And it's in like crisp condition because he's a developer. He's like souped it up and he's taken like very good care of it. And that is what we're recording on right now. I'm actually looking at it right now and I'm like, wow, what happened? Like what just happened there? Like that is absolutely nuts. Literally. So another breakdown led to a breakthrough. Incredible. Incredible. So I'm so grateful. So grateful for that. Yeah, and and this has literally been our journey throughout this whole time. Like, when we started out, I think another pivotal moment for me was we got to a point once when we were just like, oh my God. Um, So we're kind of running out of interviews here. (laughs) And I was like, you know what? (laughs) We got to do something about it. So we just went on a rampage. We just, I think from that moment, we just thought, look, we prefer to be four or five episodes ahead <laughs> yeah, than yeah. to be an episode behind because another thing to I, I think another reason why we've been able to achieve so much in five months 50 episodes god damn it in mm-hmm. five months is the fact that we've been so consistent and I think people take us a lot more the perception about our brand one <laughs> is that there's more than two of us yeah, and yeah. two, that we've been doing this for a lot longer than we actually have. <laughs> mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. most people, so obviously people, um, people become aware of us at different times. So when they come, they become aware of us and they see that we're on our 50th episode, I think you kind of automatically assume that we've been doing it for a while in comparison to other podcasts. I think yes. yeah. what we've really been good at is consistency. And, mm. you know, no shade to other podcasts, not, no, no not shade at all. At all. Um, but it's just that we've made a promise to ourselves from the outset that if we're going to do two episodes a week, we're doing two episodes a week. As you can hear from the stories, we've stuck to that. And there hasn't been a moment where, and sometimes we've even done three episodes in a week. That's a good point. Yeah, we have. We have. But I remember, was, I remember one, I think it was one week in June where, you know, I think we had a conversation or I had a consideration of, oh, let's just maybe skip this Friday and then do Monday. And I remember you saying, nah, 
because if we do that we do that once then we're going to keep on doing it and then eventually we just won't be doing this anymore so the consistent consistency was a very very pivotal key decision to make at that point very early on because uh just with habits and anything in general like if you give yourself the leeway if you if you leave, if you leave the door open a tiny bit for you to stop doing what you're doing which is easier um then you're going to eventually get to that point so you know we wanted to commit to something that was a bit more difficult for us because although we love doing what we're doing it is work and it is difficult in terms of uh scheduling and actually getting these getting the interviews and uh physically sometimes even physically getting into the the the, the building that we're recording and um getting down there you know so consistency was such a pivotal uh decision to make and i think that's what's been a, a foundation for where we're at and for us even to to get to 50 episodes yeah definitely cuz i cuz i remember when when we had that discussion and i was just being honest with myself right that we're all human mm-hmm. beings and i know look right i've put on so much weight in the past year because it's got an issue with consistency. The minute that I don't consistently exercise, I'm going to gain weight. And it would always be that you're doing something consistently. You'll be exercising for like six, seven, eight weeks and you haven't broken your routine. And that one day that you break the routine, the routine loses importance and, and yeah, loses yeah. value because you've allowed yourself to say, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's okay now not to do it. So I didn't mm-hmm. want it to be like that with the podcast because I know the moment that we said, ah. Oh, it would that because literally it's not easy like there I live in Essex and we record in Tower Bridge and I knew that if I got myself into the mindset where I was saying oh no well we can just record tomorrow I'm never gonna really want not not to say that I don't want to go and record Mm -hmm. but on the days when I'm not feeling like the most energetic or the days when I'm not feeling like oh when you look outside and it's thundering and it's raining cats and dogs and stuff those will be the days when excuses will start to come in because you've given Mm -hmm. yourself permission to make that excuse yeah yeah. and I just knew that if we got ourselves into that mindset that we would never be at 50 episodes today we wouldn't be because it would literally just become like okay well if we can't do it we just can't do it in it like no exactly and that's that is not okay and I think the other thing as well is that we hold each other accountable um mm. and i think in some partnerships don't work but i think for me what i like about being in partnership is the fact that it's not just me if it was just yeah, me yeah. again i'd make that excuse but then actually, when actually, i have so, so would I. yeah when i have someone else i'm just like oh so shit so there's so so ryan's actually ready to go and I'm yeah. over here sitting down and I'm not doing anything. Uh, that in itself pushes you. Vice versa, exactly the same. And you just don't have the, you don't give yourself the chance to even get to that state of of, uh, of mind because there's even, you know, like there's a lot of work outside of the production of the, the podcasts um, in terms of recording and, and editing. Uh, and because we work day jobs and you know, we're recording half the time. We've had to occasionally, not even occasionally, that like pretty much weekly or bi-weekly, we have 5 a.m. meetings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, we have 5 a.m. Because literally that's the only time in the day that we can sit down and just plan, like talk business and, and plan. And because there's two of us, I'm telling you, when it when the alarm goes off for five and you've you've gone to bed after recording at twelve or whatever it is, and I'm not trying to um, uh, glorify like not having enough sleep or whatever, like trust me, like get your sleep. But mm-hmm. when you have someone else there that's that you know is waking up at that time as well, you you just get out of bed. Do you know what I'm saying? So having a having a partnership and having that accountability really really does help. And also I'd recommend 5 a.m. meetings because you just get straight down to business. Ain't nobody got time for small chat <laughs> exactly. at 5 a.m. <laughs> you know what? That is actually so true because whenever we've had the 5 a.m. meetings, it's just like, all right, so you ready yet? Yeah. And then we just literally bam, jump bam. into it and we achieve so much in that yeah. hour. Um, I think 
one of the, the I think we should probably break down what really goes into an actual podcast episode. So sure. the average episode, clearly you need to get the guest. So we have to make sure that we have a process of guessing the guest. So we have mm. to we have email templates that we've created in advance that we send out to guests um to invite them to be on the show. I've done a lot of sliding into DMs mate i'm telling mm-hmm. you if it was not for instagram yeah for real we got me and ryan are just expert i remember the first time when i started sliding into dms it was a little mm-hmm. bit intimidating but now so i've got no shame in my game yeah, the, yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> the least they can say is no mm-hmm. but i go from the mindset of if you don't ask the answers always no anyway so even if they exactly. do say no right if, if you don't want to be on the show you just don't want to be on the mm-hmm. show. There's nothing, and, and the thing is as well, like when I send, when I slide into DMs, I kind of just let go and let God, as they say. I, mm. I send you the message. If you respond, great. But then again, there's an element of tracking as well because we have um, sheets that we use to track our communication with people as well, so we know exactly where we are. Because again, with with all the things that we do, we have to literally have robust processes in place to make sure that we're staying up to date. So it's not just contacting the guest, it's also knowing at what stage that guest is. If Ryan needs to follow up or if I need to follow up or, you know, have we booked them in? Have we sent them the intro email? Is there a guest that we need to send the audio to? Because there's some guests who, and there's also a guest that needs to see the questions beforehand as well. Mm -hmm. So there's and, and, <laughs> and also sometimes it's not going directly to the guest sometimes it's going to their publicist or manager um so you know it has to be very clear and very intentional and then we have to deliver exactly on that yeah <laughs> so there's so many layers so you have to think of if, if you're if you're trying to start a podcast now you have to really think of okay so recruiting the guests is one thing but you also have to make sure that the experience that the guest has with you is also a very smooth process that they would then recommend you to other people. Because one of the ways how we've been able to recruit guests as well is through recommendations from our existing guests. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to make sure that when that when you contact that person, one, you need to explain to them what the podcast is about and what you're trying to do. And one of the key things that we always do as well is that we always create bespoke interview questions for that individual and I think that has become our USP as well Mm -hmm. Um, because it's not a one-size-fits-all approach you can't approach people in that way no no and also that uh, for for a lot of the guests it's been their first podcast and that's been quite nice as well because I would have expected a lot of these people to to have done those before so um, it's been great that they've they've thoroughly enjoyed the experience and when when i say experience that doesn't mean just the recording and the conversation but literally from our first touch point from the first dm to the email to the back and forth on uh, scheduling a time to then when they meet us in, in person to then when we record to then when they when we send them the edit and then publish you know like the whole experience our feedback from the guest has been incredible and also you have to create the assets for them as well yeah, yeah. Um, for them to have it in time to yeah, promote yeah. the episode so it's it's so the, really the, so the assets are like the 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 social media posts that they can uh put on instagram twitter etc so it just makes it easy for the guests for if they do want to share they can yeah those are all the things that you have to think about beforehand and i think another thing is the good thing about researching the guests and and understanding them up front is that you want to make people feel welcome and, and, and everyone wants to talk about themselves so if you're giving people the opportunity to talk about themselves you should at least be decent enough to find out a little bit about them and, and as Ryan said as well because most of them are doing podcasts for the first time you have to have that in place so that you can guide the conversation mm-hmm. because some of them are not just going to they're not going to just open up to you because they've never done this before Obviously, yeah. there's some people who are very easy to talk to and they just talk for the gods, but mm-hmm. there are others that you have to warm up. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everyone's, everyone's different. different. Mm-hmm. Everyone's, everyone's different. different. 
And yeah. Yeah. of course, it's been a learning curve for us as well because we oh, started this as complete novices. And it's it's crazy how we've managed to, like, all the things that we just mentioned just now, no one ain't taught us, but we were, that like, we went out and we really researched podcasting. And, and Ryan's an avid um, podcast listener more than me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what we both bring to the table is obviously in terms of organisation and getting interviews together, that's more my turf. But when it comes to, obviously, the audio, that's Ryan's end. But then we also work together because there's sometimes when we'll have to transcribe the audio um, Mm -hmm. and and work together to cut down the edits and and things like that. So it is a lot of work. And when you're doing it, you don't realize, but now that you're explaining it back and then to be able to do it consistently in two episodes a week... (laughs) So, it's pretty crazy because also yeah just to talk about the um the audio side for a bit um it's yeah so i mean we record on uh so basically we get a lot of questions about what equipment that we use so i did a lot of research about which equipment to get and um we ended up ended up getting a zoom h6 which is like pretty much like top of the range podcast recorder it's not just a podcast recorder it's an audio it's a field recorder so you can use it for um like your cameras and stuff like that as well but it allows you to put four or five mics in and i was deliberating over getting this or a cheaper model um ended up getting this one and funny enough universe got to the checkout and they took off like 50 or 60 pound which actually made it cheaper than the the one i was looking at before (laughs) so um that was great um so we got that and got all the millions of sd cards and wires and microphones and all of that that we needed um i'll put up in the description exactly what we've got um because i think that would help people that are asking us but um so what we do is we we do we record onto those sd cards and then um i then extract the audio from them into my uh, audio program which is logic pro x on um on a on, on a mac um or audacity on mac or pc and you get the that audio in and you have to listen back to to the whole interview and literally pick the moments that you that you want to keep and what what you want to discard and you have to mesh it all together so it sounds like one because there are points where guests have you know requested to take things out there are things that uh just using our intuition things that we want to you know where we've kind of strayed off course or uh we don't think that it would work well for the episode um so we've taken those things up but all of that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of you know listening to the whole episode which might be like an hour and a half for example bullet pointing everything that's said then talking between us and saying all right we think or i think we should take this this and this out um and veneer might say oh no but then you know this point was good and vice versa i'll do the same thing so then we come to a decision on that and then literally edit the episode um obviously i've got a music production background and i've made the music for the show um and the sound effects and stuff so for me i can do that with my eyes closed which is been a good benefit to this to this whole process because um we had a interview yesterday um which is coming out in a couple weeks and um they were saying like it's just it's just so fortunate that you know you have that background because otherwise you if you did want to do these podcasts if you didn't learn you'd have to have a sound engineer here and then you'd have to send it off to an editor you have to get the music made by somebody and all of that so um you know what they said as well is like you know use the internet like all the answers are there like type in a question you're gonna find someone that's doing some sort of masterclass someone at the top of their game has given the answers out there and you might have to pay for it but you know pay for it and learn because once you learn and once you actually try these things out uh, you'll be amazed at what you can actually do yourself you might not be the, the the very best or the master at it but at least you can get by so yeah my point to all that was to to just get started so yeah, that's just a, a little bit about the the audio process. Um, 
So yeah, I'd recommend just like learning about it. There's lots of YouTube tutorials and just experiment. Just experiment. Interview your friends or your, your siblings and try and make those into episodes and test it out. So, I mean, so we've done 50 episodes and we've had at least, I don't know how many, we've had at least 40 odd great creatives on. And what have been some of your standout moments? I think you, for me, can't remember. I think one of the, the best things that I, I think the whole thing has been a standout moment, if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. I think what I find with for the creators is actually turned. I think a lot of our guests walk away saying it's felt like therapy for them. But I think yeah. every, every episode has been therapy for me. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> as we're going through this process, we're entrepreneurs as well. And life isn't always a bed of roses. And to come no. in every day and to hear someone's story and to hear, you know, where they've made that they've made their breakdown, their breakthrough. Um, mm. it's been really inspiring. I think one of my favorite interviews today has to be our interview with D. Allen. Um mm. of the interviews that I gave on my own that I um, conducted on my own. Mm-hmm. My favorite was um Nene and also Yinka. But one of my mm-hmm. top <laughs> favorite interviews of us together has to be our interview with Remy at Nando's. Oh, oh my days at Nando's. Yeah. <laughs> that interview <laughs> was hilarious. Um, hilarious. Yeah, if you if you haven't checked that one out, that's episode 34 uh with Remy Bergs and we joined her on her Nando's tour. So we actually done a podcast in uh Nando's in Canary Wharf and it's just hilarious, man. And inspiring. Literally. And that's the thing. It was such a combination of everything that I think makes up a good podcast because it had humor, mm. but it doesn't take anything away from um, Remy's story. So it was, it was really, really good. What was your um, favorite? Um, do you know what? I think my favorite thing about this whole thing has been the advent of the spotlight shows because it's the spotlight shows are basically on people that not a lot of people know about. Um, and on each of those shows, we've walked away or we've stopped the recording at a, at a point where we're actually like, whoa, like shocked and amazed by one, their story and their, and their talent. And it just goes to show that like, everyone's got a story and it's all valuable even though they're not where they want to be yet there's still a lot of value to be taken um at whatever stage you are at your career and I think that's just been amazing man um literally in every single conversation there's been something but one of my standouts uh in all of them is helping the guests paint the dots connect the dots even because a lot of the times it's their first time in a while or the first time ever that they've recounted their story and they haven't been able to connect the dots from something they did when they were 16 to be informative to what they're doing now and to see their face when you kind of connect the dots and saying you know by you doing that has actually caused you to to do this and they're like oh my god yeah you're right Thank you for saying that. Thank you for pointing out that that has been incredible. And then thirdly, just that literally every single guest we've we've taken inspiration from and lessons from. Like like you said, like we get to come in every single every single day and feel inspired and uh you know, we learn so much from from our guests like uh recently we had uh uh, Joel Chidi Sydenham on and he is incredibly smart like has a uh, a degree in chemical engineering like and he, and is a painter so like the conversation that we had was mind-blowing and I remember v- Veneer and I in the conversation literally was just sitting there pretty much with our mouths dropped like you just keep on talking <laughs> because we're, le- <laughs> we're yeah. learning so much literally <laughs> was in our element um and then, oh, I mean, I could I could literally name everybody. Do you know what I mean? But it's just been uh, an absolute pleasure. And then just seeing the reaction, man. Like, I knew we'd have an audience in, in, in the UK because that's where we're from. But then looking at the stats and 
seeing that you know our biggest audience is in london and our second biggest audience is in san francisco like what what? (laughs) (laughs) nuts like and then having having listeners from 30 different countries has just been absolutely incredible man so thank you to each and every one of you and each and each and every one of your ears um that's people on soundcloud apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify whatever you're listening to this on and however you're interacting with us on instagram on twitter or in real life even in real life because and this is this is for anyone listening don't place too much uh emphasis on you know the numbers of followers or likes and things like that because there are people in listening or watching you that you will never know about. Yeah. Because we've had it where, um, I've, well, I've had it where in real life, I've had people come up to me saying, I love the podcast. Like, I don't follow you on Instagram or anything like that, but I've been listening, you know, and that just goes to show like some, some of it is, is unseen. So just keep on, you know, doing what you're doing, keep on putting out your best work and you never know who's watching. Yeah, and I think for me as well, the main thing is to focus on the reason why you're doing it and mm. also focus on adding value. And, and when you when you start from a point of wanting to add value, everything else will fall into place because just by doing this podcast, it's opened up so many doors for us. Like, I don't know if we want to divulge all of the doors that it's opened for us so far and prematurely. Well, one of the mm-hmm. best things that's happened as a result of the podcast is that we had the opportunity last week to to um, attend the Black is the New Black event, um, which was Simon Frederick's um, Simon Frederick's portraits were displayed in the National Portrait Gallery of all of the UK's Black ex- excellence. Really, yeah, yeah. How would you describe them? Like all of the top Black people in the uk um yeah that have done like incredible things in in all the arts but also the sciences uh, as know, well like, sciences and, and magistrates and oh, it, it was amazing and ryan and i were afforded the opportunity to you know be amongst these people and this was the, exactly a week today right was oh, yeah. It? oh yeah, yeah it was it was a week today which is nuts it's nuts because even I sent you uh, the message earlier, like that was a week ago. It actually feels like a month ago. Like the amount, the amount of things that have happened since. Like, yeah, exactly. It's nuts. Um, it's actually nuts. But it just goes to show you that sometimes as well, I think the key is if you want to do something to just start and don't aim for perfection at the start, just start. Because once yes. you yes. start things will start to happen because even I remember Mm. at one point at the start I was a little bit hesitant because when you're when you're going into something new you have all these voices in your head saying oh it needs to be perfect it needs to be this it needs to be that and it got to the point where Ryan said no we're sticking to the deadline and let's just go for the 30th of April and then we'll figure Mm. everything else out along the way and that is literally what we've we've done to date and we figured everything else out along the way and we've done it our way. And our only focus has been to add value. We don't make any money from this as yet. You know, that is the yeah. dream. But we're trying to maintain a contis- consistent quality of output. Um, and I think that we've achieved that. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a great place to to leave this one um quick question just uh, just as i thought of it i mean we ask all of our guests um what knowing what you know now what would you say to yourself at the end of year 11 but i'm going to switch it up and ask you knowing what you know now what would you have said to yourself at the beginning of this year i think it's like a little bit of what i just said um mm-hmm. to not overthink things i think when i started at the beginning of the year I didn't go into this because for some reason I've always been at peace with working with you not even mm. at the beginning of the year I, I didn't know you <laughs> and yeah, I, never, <laughs> <laughs> I that was never an issue for me ironically I think the only thing for me going into this was just um 
my lack of knowledge of the podcasting world and then mm. um but also the most scariest thing for me was whether i had a voice or if my voice was worthy to be heard if that makes sense mm. So I kind of mm. went into this because when you go into something like this, you're exposing yourself. And yeah. luckily for us, <laughs> we haven't really, well, if we've had negative feedback, we haven't heard it. Um, but when I started off because of the, because of the nature of social media and things like that, and I went into it and I was like, oh my God, you know, if people don't like the show, they're going to be so loud about it. And they're going to be so vocal about the fact that, Oh, I use our chat and share or so mm-hmm. I'll kind of went in with that just because I thought that that is what we would get back. But I think because of the nature of our show and there's no controversy and everything that we do is for the guests and to portray them in the most positive light as possible. Everything, all the anxiety that I had at the beginning. Yeah. Was just like, silly now looking back i think that was my main anxiety mm. do i have a voice and um do people want to hear my voice and and my opinions and what i have to say yeah, yeah. what about you exactly. <laughs> i think it was i think thinking back it's about trust in the process because you like me have done many projects and have had many uh, ups and downs you know, um, especially with working with different people. And, you know, I think going into this year, starting this this new thing, it was more about just trusting the process. Um, because, you know, I've always, no, I haven't always said, I got to the conclusion where I decided that, look, the only thing that I can control is my output. Everything that happens after that, is almost like let go and let God kind of thing. And this year has been a real testament to that because, you know, just even how we met, like that was, that was nuts. And how we've kind of uh, formalized our partnership and, and ultimately for the creators and get into the, the, this 50th episode, like, and everything that's happened since has been, you know, trust in trust in the process and you know you have your your times where you think you know better than than life (laughs) you know like it should go this way it should go that way but it's about just taking taking the power out and just knowing that you are ultimately powerless in that sense and all you can do is put out good stuff and you know do that um yeah I think I think that's what, that's what I would say to myself at the very start of this year, being I didn't know you or anything, and I was coming off the back of a tumultuous 2017. So I'd say, look, it's been crazy, but trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah, just surrender to the process. I think that's so true. Um, what I've realized, I think the the biggest lesson that I've learned through for the creators is that anything is possible and sometimes <laughs> even even the things that you had in mind the universe has way bigger things in mind for you so all you yeah, can do that's one thing that's definitely you, happened um, yeah <laughs> we've we've been do what you can with like, what you like, yeah do what you can with what you have and the universe will do the yeah. rest literally like do not overthink it don't sit there thinking that you need to have everything in order. In a sense, mm. blag it. Feel the fear and yeah. do it anyway. <laughs> Literally, yeah. just feel the fear and do it anyway. We have never done anything like this before. We've never done podcasts before. And we just feel the fear and do it anyway. And just don't make excuses. Because excuses only sound good to the person that's making them there is always a solution there's always a way to get around stuff and I think that's the thing that I I admire the most about you in the sense where you have a very positive mindset and we always end up finding the solution in the problem so we never sit there and dwell on oh my god this is going wrong we're just okay so this is where we are <laughs> right yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
how do we figure this out? Because we need to get from A to B. So Absolutely. I think it's been an awesome experience. It's And I have to also take the time out to say thank you to every single person who has listened to us to this point, to every single person on our social platforms who has taken the time out to even comment on a post, mm. to slide into our DMs, to post about our podcast in their stories to everyone who's left a review everyone who's told a friend about what we're doing everyone who said a kind word everyone who's recommended us guests for the show and we're just so grateful because at the beginning of this year this was an idea absolutely absolutely yeah thank you to all of those people that have that have interacted um and 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 also like thank you to people that ask us how it's going like i don't think people realize how much that gives someone who's who's working on something just showing a bit of interest how much that propels somebody so thank you for the people that have um you know expressed enthusiasm in what we're doing as well that's that's really helped and i think as well one thing that you guys should definitely know about ryan and i is that yes we count every little small win a whatsapp like, if you were to see our insta <laughs> our, our whatsapp, WhatsApp. conversations <laughs> like just by one of you saying yeah. to us you enjoyed an episode we celebrate that And I hope that we continue Mm. to do that going forward as our platform grows. But just know that if you're ever, you know, an up and coming podcaster or, you know, you need advice from us, just slide into our DMs because we're always willing to help anyone because people help us all the time. And some of the opportunities that we've been afforded because of this podcast has been through the love of other people and them seeing certain qualities in us and wanting to help us to propel forward so if you ever need anything if you ever need any assistance if you ever need any guidance please just feel free to reach out because we lift Absolutely. we rise by lifting so where can people up. find you on socials or personally so um people can find me on i'm only operate on instagram to be honest um, you need to get on Twitter. Yeah, I need to get on Twitter, but, yeah. <laughs> but I just feel like anybody got time for that. But anyway, um, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at the Venere Bass. My name is difficult to spell, and I'm not going to say how to spell it on here. But if you go on the um, Instagram profile for for the creators podcast, you'd find. Um, links to my socials and also to ryan's on there as well um and then yeah yeah mine is on mine is on there um yeah feel free to get in touch like we're you know might not answer right away but we 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 definitely will um reach back out so um guys thank you again thank you so much um for another episode thanks for celebrating us with with us for episode 50 50. (laughs) Fiddy, um, aka thank you so Ferrari much. We're, F15. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, like we're we're gassed to be exactly where we are, and we're super excited for the for the next 50. Man, like, got some exciting things planned for guys. you guys, exciting guests so, as well. Should we should also yeah. say that, um, we're gonna end season one at the end of October, we just wanted to end Black yeah. History Month, so. At the end of Black to- October, not Black October. <laughs> <Black Tober. laughs> it's actually a good one, though. That is at the it, end of, yeah. Why did I just call it Black October? At the end of Black October, we're going to be ending the first season of the podcast. And season two will commence in January 2019. And I can tell you that some of the guests that we got coming are absolutely Jeez. amazing. So, yeah, man, yeah. we be working. Um, trust, but trust me stay tuned cool. stay tuned uh, guys. Uh, guys especially for our 50th please give us the gift of a review on apple podcasts um, and wherever you hear this um, please share this one with a friend and 
one of your favorite episodes you have 50 to choose from <laughs> um yeah please do that that really really helps grow the show um and we're gonna stick up a patreon page um so if you do want to uh help us out and you know help the show help the production of the show and show your support um we'll be setting up a patreon page which we'll stick up in the link um so you can help us help you <laughs> yeah help us out we need it <laughs> all right guys um it's been absolutely fantastic to be on this journey with you thank you very much for your ears and if you haven't already just go and subscribe and follow us on socials and tell us what you think drop us a dm drop us an email but until next time toodles bye that's what you usually say. <laughs> Toodles. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.